Hello, budding biologists, and welcome to another exciting episode of General Biology Honors. Today, we're going to look at Oswald Avery, and he is the man that discovered that DNA was the transformative agent. So what exactly are we going to learn today? We're going to start by reviewing Griffith's experiment, so that's in your head, because Oswald Avery built on that. We're going to talk about Avery and his team. We're going to talk about what was the actual experiment he did and what were the conclusions that he came to. So, starting with Griffith, uh, if you remember, Griffith took streptococcus pneumoniae, and he was trying to figure out why it caused disease. And so, what he did is he put um, he put uh, a harmless strain into a mouse, and the mouse lived. He put the deadly strain into the mouse, the mouse died. He put the dead, deadly strain into a mouse, the mouse lived. And then he put the dead, deadly strain and the harmless strain together, and the mouse died, which was a surprise. And so he didn't know what it was, but he knew that something caused the, back, the harmless bacteria to change into the deadly bacteria, and he called that the transformative agent. And once he figured this out, everybody wanted to know what the transformative agent was. And Griffith was one of the key bacteriologists in Britain and Avery was one of the key bacteriologists in the United States. He was born in Canada but he moved to New York and worked at the Rockefeller Institute and um, he started to study how disease was spread and caused. Okay? And so he didn't believe Griffith at first but finally they, uh, he saw it reproduced and believed that it, there was a transformative agent. So in 1945 along with McLeod and Clary, yeah, they, uh, McCartney, sorry, McCarty, they worked together to figure out um, how, what the transformative agent was. And it, it kind of turns out streptococcus, even though it can do a lot of stuff and cause a lot of diseases, it's actually only made out of five macromolecules. And there are different types of carbohydrates, there's different types of lipids, there's different types of proteins. But ultimately, they're, they're either carbohydrates, they're lipids, they're proteins, they're RNA, or they're DNA. And if you, so one of those five things had to be the transformative agent. We just didn't know which one. Everybody thought it was proteins, but we're going to see if that's true. So how, here's how it works. What he would do is he would use enzymes to remove one kind of macromolecule at a time. Then he'd add the rest of the dead S strain to some live R strain, and he would put that into a mouse and then he'd wait to see if pneumonia developed, which is exactly what Griffith did. So he sort of did Griffith's experiment minus one enzyme each time. And then uh, if that caught, if transformation still happened, he knew he had not taken out the transformative agent. So he would take something else out. And he kept doing this until he'd taken each of the things out. And he waited to see which one kept transformation from happening. So, when he removed carbohydrates from the dead S strain and combined that with the R, he put it in the mouse, transformation happened. And so he knew that carbohydrates were not the transformative agent because if they were and you take them out, then it wouldn't happen, right? Pretty basic. Okay, so then he removed the lipids and did exactly the same thing, put it with the R, uh, put it in the mouse, waited to see if transformation happened. It did, so he knew that it was not lipids that were the transformative agent. And to be honest, he was, he pretty much knew that. He was not expecting it to be lipids or carbohydrates. He didn't think it was either of those, but he had to eliminate them as possibilities, okay? So then he started looking at the stuff that he thought maybe it would be, and the biggest one, the one they really expected was proteins. So they, they took an enzyme called protease, and anytime you have A-S-E on the end of a word, that's an enzyme. An enzyme is a protein, so they took a protein that would remove the other proteins, and they put it in the cell, and they put it together, and transformation still happened. So they're very surprised because now it's not, it's not proteins. It can't be proteins because transformation still happened. So they looked at RNA, and, they were, and people for some reason, I really don't know why, they thought RNA might be it. Um, but it wasn't. And so they've taken carbohydrates out, they've taken lipids out, they've taken RNA out, they've taken proteins out using enzymes. Every time transformation still happens. So it cannot be one of those that is the transformative agent. That leaves one thing, which nobody thought it was. So they took out DNA, and guess what? When they removed DNA from the S strain and combined it with the R strain, and they put it in a mouse, Bacterial transformation did not occur 
the mouse lived. It did not develop pneumonia. And this told him that the transformative, transformative agent had to be DNA. It was the only thing it could be. And people were really skeptical about this. I mean, they thought he did good work, but they, they just were like, I don't think this is true. No one expected it to be that. Because everybody in the scientific community just believed it was proteins, that they were varied enough to handle this, this amount of genetic complexity. Um, other labs repeated the results. They got the same results. And some people believed Avery, but a lot of people didn't. It actually took about six or seven years and another experiment done by Hershey and Chase right here before people actually believe the DNA was the genetic material, was the transformative agent. Um, finally, once they figured that out, they gave credit to Avery and McCarty and McLeod, but these guys never won the Nobel Prize. Uh, many of the other people we'll see in this race for DNA won the Nobel Prize, but even though Avery really started, he never got it. So what we discussed today, we, re we reviewed Griffith's experiment. We talked a little bit about who Oswald, Oswald Avery was and who his other team members were. Um, we looked at the experiment that Avery did and how he used enzymes to take one piece at a time out looking for the transformative agent. And we looked at the conclusion he came to that DNA was the transformative agent. Well, I hope that helps. Peace out, homies. Uga 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 shaka uga 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 shaka uga 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 shaka. Ah, I'm hooked on a feeling. <laughs>